What's up guys, we're back with another Mythic Legions Aerith here wave review and we have everyone's favorite on deck today. We have got an orc up for review and not only do we have an orc, we have yet another green orc. Which for me personally, I don't really have a whole lot of green orcs. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to take a look at uh, Vorthog here. He of course comes in our standard Mythic Legion style packaging, so collector friendly stuff as usual. Figure there in the big window, we've got a bio card for Vorthog there on the side panel, and then the back of the box has a huge spread of artwork showcasing Aerithir, our cross sell for the wave, as well as a current Mythos write up. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, the last regular figure in the Aerithir wave, our Vorthog. And I'm not going to say I saved the best for last, but this figure is, I guess, one that I kind of forgot about all the stuff that he comes with and just his capability for being different kinds of orcs. Because this guy has a lot of stuff in the box, and uh, he definitely has every possibility in the world of being the new hot orc on the market because you can make this guy but then you can also make varying types of non-unique orcs basically you can have uh, a standard orc out of this body which makes me want a whole lot more of these guys now that i have them in hand so let's get started see what he can do see how he moves around of course this guy is a 1.0 style figure so just like almost every other figure in this wave you kind of already know what to expect so we've got a head that can look up pretty decently. He's got a super long head because of the fact that he has that beard. So he really doesn't look down, but he looks straight ahead, basically. You get really good tilt side to side, and then of course you get rotation. Neck also rotates as well. Uh, we've got arms that go out at the shoulders. They of course rotate. You've got your single rotating elbow. You've got uh, rotation at the forearm there. You've got rotation at the wrist. And then you've got hinges as well. We've got our single buck torso, so he goes backwards a little bit. He doesn't go forwards all that much. This is the same kind of situation that uh, Magnus has, because they're very similar figures in terms of, well, the majority of their construction, honestly. Uh, so he doesn't really go forward too far. He has a very, very big uh, belt buckle there. You've got a little bit of tilt side to side. Again, it's another instance of that high belt, so that kind of gets in the way. And then you've got full rotation. The legs go out. I mean, they go out basically all the way. You do have to watch out for the uh, the skirt pieces because they're long. So they're going to want to restrict you a little bit. And also, I'd be weary of kind of deforming them over time. But the legs can, of course, go all the way out. They do kick forward all the way. And then you've got your swivel. They also will go backwards as well if you need that. You've got your single swiveling knee. And then we've got rotation. You've got really good rocker. And then you've got uh, hinges down at those feet, not boots, because this guy comes with feet, which is not the first instance of this in the line, but of course it's not very common either. And now we're getting into that realm of getting feet and hands in, of course, uh, the packs that have been introduced in this wave. So he does move, I don't know, basically as well as a most other 1.0 figures. If he has any area where he's really locked down, it's in his ability to look down and then his ability to sort of lurch forward. That belt just sort of gets in the way. Now, having saved this guy for last, I have to question, I have to question why I saved him for last, and I'm not really sure. I think I just sort of got caught up in a bunch of the new stuff because, well, this is just another orc, right? And it's definitely not. And I say that as someone who really doesn't have hardly any orcs. It's the one thing that I am woefully underrepresented on in my collection because, so many of them are just so old at this point, and I never had them, and I'm not going to pay for them now. So I have very few. And if anything, that's the mistake I made with this particular wave, is not paying more attention to this particular figure and seeing what he can become. Because out of the box, he is this sort of old, grizzled, uh, veteran orc commander. And he does look fantastic, but when we get to accessories, we're going to see that there is so much potential for this guy, for someone like me, who wants a couple extra, you know, nameless orcs on the shelf, but for somebody out there who wants to just kit bash the hell out of these things and mix and match with other orcs, this guy is, is ripe for the picking. So uh, there is a lot of cool stuff going on here. He does share parts, again, with, uh, with Magnus, so he's got the same, uh, he's got the same torso, and he's got a similar 
belt, but it's not exactly the same. So it's mostly the same, but like this sort of central, uh, centerpiece right here with that design is not the same. And then of course the little skirt piece, the chain mail that he has is not the same either. So they are, uh, they're similar. They're kind of like, uh, you know, opposing forces in this wave to me. He's very much a commander in the Red Shield. Vorthog is very much a commander in the Legions of Aerith here on the Orc side. And I think this guy looks looks tremendous. Not only does he introduce uh, more instances of the hands, so he's got gesturing hands on him in the box, we also get feet on him. And like I said, this isn't the first time we've ever gotten them. Uh, what, Hera? Hera from the Advent of Decay Wave has has feet and maybe somebody else, I, if, we're, if we're not counting hooves or anything like that. Uh, but I do really like the way this figure looks. I like this combination of parts. He's got a lot of those Dark Knight parts that I kind of like. So the uh, the gauntlets, the uh, the boots, the calf area. So a lot of that really rigid and sharp armor, basically, with a lot of patina and rust detail. But I do really like the uh, the new belt and skirt pieces that we're working with this color scheme and I'm a big fan of this new torso that they gave him and Magnus of course the color scheme is different Magnus is gold Vorthog is silver so if you want to switch things up in some way you've got two different sets of that armor and then he's got the opposing sort of rivets so Magnus is gold with silver rivets Vorthog is silver with gold rivets and then he's got a bunch of wash in there as well but not only that you also get the bare thighs and bare arms when it comes to an orc. So I do really like that as well. He is, of course, topped off by a brand new head sculpt. And I do really like this, don't get me wrong. But again, a lot of this figure's interest for me now that I've sort of played around with him is the fact that I can just make him a regular orc. But this is a fantastic, fantastic looking head sculpt. Uh, it makes me think of like a, like a World of Warcraft orc in some ways, not not to demean anything at all, uh, but that's just sort of what it looks like with that underbite in particular, it's really doing it for me. And then the beard aspect. I love the bald head and just that furrowed, grizzled brow. So he looks like he's some sort of no-nonsense commander. You know, more like a hero class kind of character, someone who is a little bit more legendary uh, in their ranks and things of that nature. So he looks really battle-hardened. But the sculpt is tremendous. Paint detail, of course, is through the roof. And this, this honestly is just a fantastic looking figure figure from head to toe. He's easily one of the best figures in this wave. I mean, right out of the box, but he comes with so much stuff to just elevate him even more. Now, as far as accessories goes, because of course I have very much touched upon this already, this guy is capable of being made into a standard, well, maybe not standard standard, but a more non-unique orc. He definitely still has a little bit of flair to him because of some facial markings, but this is not necessarily a standout, unique, hero kind of character uh, that Vorthog himself is with the unhelmeted head. So this is clearly not Vorthog underneath there. So you've got one of the older style orc heads with, uh, with the tusks that stick out. You've got these three white markings that run down the chin. And then, of course, we've got the big silver bladed helmet, which I absolutely love. Uh, this is one of my favorite heads for orcs, so I'm really happy that this is the one they included. He does, of course, come with pauldrons and... These are new, right? Someone let me know. I don't I don't know why I can't remember, but these look new to me and they are sharp as hell, so watch out with those spikes like they are they are not friendly to your hands by any means, but they look absolutely fantastic. They have tons of patina and sort of grittiness to them that the rest of the armor has, so it very much flows. He has soft goods, so you've got a soft goods piece that you can put underneath the belt. So pop them apart at the chest, and then you just take the belt off and plop that down over top of the peg. And then you've got a, a soft goods sort of pelt that sits underneath his, uh, his skirt piece and the girdle, which I think looks fantastic. I'm not too sure if I'm going to use it forever or not, and I do feel like the chain mail piece probably should come out. It doesn't really seem to work, uh, both of them in there, so I popped it out before putting that on. It just pegs out of the crotch. And then he does have replacement feet, so you even get the Dark Knight style boots. So just pull the feet out and put the new ones in. So you have a lot of options here. You can, of course, keep this figure as Vorthog, but put the pauldrons on him. Or you can, you know, use the soft goods on Vorthog, or use the boots on Vorthog, or make this guy into an entirely unique, um, or non-unique, rather, just sort of grunt orc which again, I absolutely like, and it works really well for someone like me, and I'm sure there are plenty of folks out there in the same situation who could use more of this, uh, and I just regret not paying more attention. So he does have a lot of stuff to change up the figure itself, and then of course we do have actual uh, accessories, weaponry and stuff. So we've got the ever-present strap, we've of course got back adapters to add to the pile, and then we've got 
uh, weaponry and well we've got hands so we do have an extra set of hands because like I said he has the uh, gesturing hands on him in the box we get gripping hands as well so another instance of getting more hands in this particular wave we get my I think my current favorite shield in the line which I absolutely love this one. Uh, the, just the overall sculpt is tremendous. There's tons of detail on this. There's so much wash and like line work throughout this. You've got gold, you've got red, you've got different kinds of silver against that sort of gunmetal color. We get the bigger sword, which uh, this isn't too old. We've seen this before, but it's not, I think it's from Advent of Decay, if I remember correctly. Someone will tell me that I'm wrong, I'm sure. But this thing is just, uh, it's just kind of black with uh, silver br dry brushing on it, but I really do like this sword. And then we've got the big uh, war hammer as well. So silver dry brushing over top of that black color with some bronzy kind of accents, more coppery really. But I do like everything he comes with. I mean, you've got some, some big items with this guy. You've got the massive shield, the war hammer, the bigger sword, and then you've got an extra head. You've got pauldrons, you've got two sets of hands, two sets of feet, you've got a, uh, what a, a little uh, skirt piece down there for soft goods. So this guy is absolutely loaded. I thought the Hellfire Goblin was probably the most uh, packed when it comes to this particular way, but I think I think this guy's got to take the cake right now because of all the things you can do with Vorthog. Uh, so there is just a lot of options over here, and there's our there's our original head right there. And he looks he looks tremendous in pretty much any configuration you've got him in. Regular out of the box. Or if you want to mix and match those parts, there's a ton of stuff in here to really go to town and make your own sort of custom work. So yeah, if anything, this is a great way to cap off the wave for me because I really did open him last. He did not get opened until after every other figure was already done and reviewed. And, and it's made this one a lot more fun for me just because I kind of forgot everything about this figure. I didn't pay attention to anybody else's reviews. I didn't pay attention to much of photography either. I just waited on him and... I've been really happily surprised. He looks fantastic out of the package. He moves well, but he comes with so much stuff, and I can't stress that enough. He comes with feet. He comes with extra hands. He comes with an extra head. He comes with awesome pauldrons. He comes with a handful of weapons, but it's his ability to be able to be made into a standard orc that I think is going to make this guy a very desirable figure. Once once all the orders are out there and once the in-stock sale happens, this guy is going to be one that people are clamoring to get a hold of because you just can't get regular orcs that easily and he is definitely going to be wanted for his initial look but then also for the possibilities he holds so that's going to do it for this look at the mythic legions air Theorwave wave vorthog let me know what you guys think feel free to like comment subscribe and share and until next time